my name is Yannick Fischler and I work with Angelica and Daniel uh, on the ice sheet modeling. And well, the main idea of my talk is to couple the ice sheet and sea level system model um, with a subglacial hydrology model, which we have developed last year. And well, as a startup slide, I got a um, well part of the Earth system model. I guess Angelica already introduced this uh, very good, so I will only recap this um, briefly. Um, you can see uh, various effects here. Um, from top, you have an atmosphere model, um, which provides snow or rain, um, or some information about the temperature, um, which causes melting on top of the ice sheet. You have um, ocean models, which are interested on calving events, um, which produce icebergs, but um, also um, causes forces on the ice sh um, shelf, which are important for the moving of the ice sheet. And a third parameter, which is of interest regarding the ocean and the ice sheet, is the freshwater flux. Oops, sorry. Um, um, which is um, which comes from melting water, and um, affects the ocean simulation too. In the bottom of the ice sheet, we have um, the interesting part for um, this uh, talk. Here um, we have melting water, as Angelica already said. Um, the bottom of the ice sheet is the warmest part, and yeah, here we have melting effects, and these melting effects um, cause subglacial water which we simulate in a subglacial hydrology model. Another recap slide um, about ISSM, which Daniel has talked about. Um, well, I would only like to summarize that we have a, a multi-core finite element solver, which uses 2D and 3D formulated problems. Um, and um, the, um, well, the fact that um, Problems in ISSM are already simulated in 2D and 3D. It's very good for us because we can use um, the t uh, 2D view of ISSM for our coupling, which I will show later. ISSM is MPI parallel uh, based on PETSI, and um, it scales up to 3,000 uh, <coughs> 3, MPI processes running the Greenland setup. Um, this is um, top view of Greenland. And well, we would like to use these 3000 MPI processes in a coupled run as well in an ideal world. To give you some um, ideas about um, uh, yeah, a hydrology model in ice sheet uh, systems, um, I have this picture for you. Um, here you can see that there are um, various hydrology situations. Um, we have on top of the ice sheet the fern hydrology. Um, for everybody who is not familiar with ice sheet modeling, fern is an intermediate state from snow to ice. So after some while, um, snow um, becomes fern and then it becomes ice. We have superglacial lakes or rivers, which at some points uh, might collapse. And when these um, superglacial lakes collapse, the water of the lake um, runs through a mula. Um, and becomes subglacial water too. And on the bottom of the ice sheet, we have this water which runs down through the ice sheet and the melting water, which we have to handle in our subglacial hydrology model. In this model, we have different cases. So we have um, efficient um, water transport cases where the water, uh, inefficient, sorry, water transport cases where the water runs very slow. Um, these are visualized in these three uh, left blocks. Um, for example, when the water is, yeah, in, I would say, small drops um, in the ice. And um, the other case is um, when the wa water runs fast, efficient in channels, um, yeah, and reaches its target faster. All these um, we can model in Coors MPI, um, which uses a porous medium. And this mimes channels um, via the transmissivity and does not resolve um, individual channels because it's faster to simulate it with a porous medium instead of um, resolve all these channels. Um, as a more abstract view, um, Coors MPI is a finite differences solver in 2D. 
and the main topics um, or the main uh, quantities it's, uh, it computes are the water pressure, which is below the ice sheet because this is important for um, the moving of the ice sheets, and it calculates the fresh water flux, which is an important input for ocean models. It's also based on PET-C and MPI parallel, and on this side um, we can use approximately 4,000 MPI processes, and yeah, in an ideal world we want to use these in a coupled simulation too. Yeah, as we would like to couple these simulations as they are physically related to each other, I would like to show you um, which quantities we are interested in. Um, this figure is not complete, but the most interesting parts are in there. And I would start with the most, with the most difficult one, the inland ice mask. Um, this causes problems because um, until now, course MPI always run with a static simulation area. And with an ice sheet model coupled to course MPI, um, we will gain an uh, evolving ice sheet area because the ice sheet growth and shrinks dependent of the current situation. And then the grounded mask of course MPI um, will evolve too. And this will cause various physics effect in course MPI, which I will talk in detail later on. Then we have um, some more easy um, quantities. We will exchange the ice thickness, basal velocity, ice pressure, basal temperature from ISSM to Coors MPI. Um, and the water pressure, which I've already mentioned, is of interest for the moving of the ISSM and mainly the stress balance of ISSM. And um, very important for Coors MPI, water input. Um, as Coors MPI is a hydrology system, we need the input water, which comes from the drainage um, events and uh, the basal melt rate. And there might be some other simulations of interest to couple with. Um, a surface hydrology model might be interesting. Um, it might be interesting to couple the, an ocean model to give the fresh water flux to the ocean directly and also the uh, satellite data um, from Daniel is an interesting aspect. To give you an idea about um, the meshes we are talking about, uh, we have different resolutions of the Greenland mesh which um, run in productive runs. And um, the ISSM mesh there is um, very heterogeneous. So we have um, the finest mesh, which have a resolution of um, 250 to, um, uh, meters to 10 kilometers. So the smallest edge in this um, mesh is 250 meters, and the largest edge is 10 kilometers, um, which is somehow interesting for the mapping within Precise. And we have approximately um, 17 million vertices, but these 17 million vertices um, are distributed in 15 layers. So we have for one layer approximately 1 million elements, and as we currently couple only one layer to another simulation, um, we have to couple a maximum of approx approximately 1 million vertices here. Um, on the other hand, we have Coors MPI, which has an equidistant structured grid. And here we have a minimum resolution of 150 meters. Um, and as Greenland is very huge, um, we have 187 million um, elements here. And I guess um, using 187 million um, elements in precise uh, will become interesting. Um, <coughs> yeah, um, to give you an idea about the time step we're using, um, most likely calculating in years. So, um, well, for ISSM, this is approximately one hour. And in Coors MPI, we use uh, 30 minutes at the moment. But uh, as Coors MPI is a pretty new code, um, these uh, time step sizes might change. Um, our current cu coupling supports single layer exchange, so we only couple a 2D view of ISSM to another application. This is sufficient for Coors MPI as well as for the um, data exchange Daniel wants to do. 
And um, for Coors MPI, we also use a parallel explicit coupling scheme. And um, the mapping well, is an open question, I would say. Um, the planned exchange intervals are approximately one month. Uh, but in summer months, when um, there's more melting water, we might want to have um, smaller exchange intervals. But um, well, our preliminary um, experiments shows us that because of the um, high computational time of ISSM and QAS MPI to compute one month, um, we will have a very low impact in the computation time if we run coupled simulation. During our development of our interface, um, some modeling question came up. And uh, well, the most interesting one is um, the handling of the changing simulation area. So if um, the ice sheet shrinks, um, the, um, uh, we get new borders um, of the ice sheet. And um, due to this, this change, um, we um, need to generate new outflow regions. So as you see in um, this picture here, um, we have this violet um, regions, um, which um, represent a high um, water flux. And the water runs from the ice sheet to this white area here, so like a river. And when the ice sheet um, do you see my mo Oh, you don't see it, sorry. Um, uh, when the ice sheet, uh, I'm here at the moment. Do you see my pointer now? Yes. Um, and when the ice sheet um, gets smaller, we have to regenerate um, the boundary condi conditions here um, that um, we have new regions where the water outflow exists. Um, currently, this is modeled by hand, but in a um, runtime coupled simulation, we have to model some automatism um, which generates these boundary conditions. Um, another aspect of the um, evolving um, area is that ISSM has, um, will generate new ice mass eventually, and we need some water input which is under this ice mass if um, the ice um, sheet grows. <coughs> Another aspect is that we have to remodel QAS MPI because currently we use a discrete mask for our um, yeah, um, compute region. And ISSM uses a continuous level set field. And we think that it's uh, much easier for the coupling if we use this continuous level set field in QAS MPI too. And, um, um, other modeling question is the data mapping, which is, um, yeah, which you have to decide which is the best one. At this point, we would like to give some um, feedback to the Precise developers. Um, we found Precise very convenient, uh, especially the interface which uh, you developed, because there are no many functions which you have to know. Uh, it's a very quick start. Um, the guidelines on your website we found very helpful, um, but as I realized today in the morning, um, some interesting parts are missing, um, especially things like the direct access. Um, yeah, I've never read about this before. And the tooling environment was very helpful, and uh, we'll go on like this. Uh, what we found very difficult and not entirely intuitive was creating the precise configuration. I'm not sure if this uh, is possible to uh, create any easier, but um, well, it's somehow challenging. And here I would like to add that um, um, guideline how to write uh, an adapter configuration, as you have mentioned, you want to unify this. Um, would be very helpful because we have written our own configuration file for our ISSM adapter. And well, writing two adapter files and one of these might not be uh, intuitive at all um, gets um, even more messy than it is already. Yeah, um, the solid data mapping um, which we want to achieve is very challenging. 
And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the session on on Thursday. Um, and yeah, I'm very interested in what we can learn there. I have uh, four ideas um, which might improve precise at this point. Um, as Angelika already mentioned before, uh, it might be interesting to export and import map mapping rates so that setup times become slower. Um, as we have a few million um, elements in our um, exchange, calculating the mapping rates is expensive. And if we would be able to export these from one run and import these mapping rates in every other run um, would be beneficial. Uh, second idea is an adaptive support radius and radial basis functions. I do not know if this is anyhow possible, but after your talk, no, whose talk was, yes, it was your talk, wasn't it? Um, I think it is. Um, and uh, yeah, this would help in uh, creating a mapping which uses um, a larger support radius in regions where our mesh has um, edges of 10 kilometers and a smaller support radius in regions where our mesh has um, um, edge length of about 250 meters. Um, also, um, adaptive exchange intervals would be of interest because we uh, want to couple the code um, with one month in winter and about or, or less uh, smaller exchange intervals in the summer because then we have um, a higher melting rate and have to um, exchange more often. And during the um, first steps which we made um, with Precise, I sometimes thought that um, sending any arbitrary message between the applications might be helpful too. Um, I have no example at the moment, but there were some situations where I thought this could be beneficial. Yeah. Um, at the current point, we have to advance our modeling of course MPI um, to be able to run stable coupled runs. Um, regarding our adapter, um, we need to yeah, complete or improve our configuration file um, so that we are able to couple other applications to, uh, applications to so that uh, Daniel can benefit from our adapter we have wrote. And um, for an arbitrary coupling, uh, 3D coupling might be of, of interest too. And for our current um, um, coupling situation, um, we need to implement the support of um, other um, elements which are available in ISSM and also for um, finite meshes of ISSM. But well, as we currently run only linear finite elements and use only one element type in ISSM, we do not need this and so we have not implemented this yet. So let me summarize. Um, in general, we can say that uh, runtime coupling is of huge interest for Earth system model. Um, we have seen the um, subglacial hydrology model, which is interested for coupling, but also um, the satellite data and even um, ocean models are interesting for couple two. Um, we um, have already implemented a prototype to couple ISSM and Coors MPI, which shows quite good results, but um, also shows that we have some new research research questions which we have to solve now. And in general, we can say that we found Precise very convenient and the interface uh, fits our needs and we like to go on with our work. So thank you for your attention. And at this point, thank you for uh, to Jonathan Otto, a student of mine, and Angelika Humbert, and um, that Thomas Kleiner from, from Alfred Wegener Institute uh, for the collaboration. Um, let me maybe start with the first question. Um, you mentioned this uh, very uh, different or non-uniformly distributed meshes. Yes. How do you actually handle the domain decomposition in the solver? Maybe just to summarize it in two or three sentences. Do you split just topological or do you split according to the number of degrees of freedom on each rank or? 
Um, well, uh, ISSM uses uh, Parmetis, also the library, and currently it uh, uses uh, well a constant weights. Um, so uh, each vertex got uh, the, the same weight, um, which uh, well causes some load imbalance in the um, whole system. But as we have um, various um, modules, which all show some different um, load imbalance. Um, this is a good assumption overall. So, all right. Uh, other questions? Sounds good. <laughs> hopeful that um, hopefully they, they go away. Um, yeah, probably takes too long if I comment a lot of them. Um, maybe for the last one, because that's something we're also uh, trying to develop right now. Um, yeah, having examples here would be really helpful, so especially if you, if you do solve this one in parallel, like how would you want that this behaves in parallel? Well, I have not thought about this question yet. <laughs> but, well, there's some time until tomorrow, and tomorrow we have this uh, precise, uh, how do you call it, is with these tables. Uh, well, I, I think about it, and then I, I will write something down. <laughs> All right, are there further questions? Why is the network, you know, why the is slower when you have shorter length intervals between the exchanges? Well, what do you mean? So if you have a, a smaller exchange intervals in the summer month or I think I do not have got your question right because I, um, we well the simulation becomes slower when we use um, smaller exchange intervals because we exchange more often, but the simulation at all becomes not slower. Okay. Maybe one last question from myself. Uh, so the con uh, the scaling plots Daniel showed in his previous presentation, are they ex exactly the same scaling you was re were referring to during your talk? Yes, yes. Okay. This just was the same. Well, we have uh, similar uh, scaling plots for Kuas, and um, the ISSM plots were exactly the same, yes. Okay. All right, then I think this finalizes our questions. Uh, then thanks again. <laughs>